Hey, welcome to Mad Dog's After Show. That's the AFTR show with Mad Dog and Cole the Sandmaster Farrell. Where are we going today? Where are we going today? Hey, man. I decided to fly through the air and live in the sunlight and enjoy life as much as I could, and that's just what I'm doing. Telling you what a week I, I realized after I got here. I'm uh, should enter. One, thank you, Kicker Performance Audio, Bomber Eyewear. We'll get more there later. Uh, special thank you to Brad's Cartoons. I'll get into that. Eugene in Springfield, um, and the whole Doomfest crew. Where are we? We are in. Uh, oh, where am I? I'm in uh, Fort Oregon. And a Bass Western tonight. This has been my home for the last week. Uh, we are at Doomfest 2022. We just wrapped it this afternoon. Um, I realized after we got started earlier this week that this is my 14th consecutive Doomfest. That's amazing. That's uh, that's quite the record. I I wonder how many people either have you beat or have you tied for 14 straight. There's got to be some locals that are right in oh, that yeah. realm, but there's some locals and some vendors, but um, a lot of you know vendors uh, or vendor reps when they've changed uh, jobs, you know, or whatever they've gone, um, you know, maybe they missed a year or whatever. So yeah, no, dude, it's it's like I can't believe it. I mean, I'm I'm so stoked that this was such a great event. And this year, thank God, we had great weather. Um, you know, we we had so many events going on, dude. It was, you've been out here, you know, this is like where we really got to know each other. I mean, I met you at, in Glamis, as you had to remind me in episode one. Um, thanks. You're welcome. That's my producer job. <laughs> but uh no, like this is where you and I really got to know each other, you know? And so I have so many fond memories of this event. And man, and, you know, it's, I, I remember one year when I was with Muzzies, um, my daughter Kendall, one of my triplets was getting married and I was committed to go to the Polaris dealer show and Doomfest started the day the, Polaris dealer show setup day started the day the Polaris dealer show ended. Um, and Kendall got married the day before I had to fly out to Vegas for the show. So literally we had like, you know, the, uh, what do they call that? The dinner when you have the practice. Oh, the rehearsal dinner. Rehearsal dinner. Yeah. We had that next day. Of course, had all the family there. So it was late night. Next day of the wedding, activities all day. Went home, I think I slept like three hours, jumped on a flight to Vegas, uh, got in, got to my hotel, changed, went to the dealer show opening, did two days of the dealer show, uh, jumped on a flight at like out of Vegas at like five o'clock in the morning. And I've been up with some well-known off-roaders till the wee hours. I finally drove the uh, van. Uh, being the designated driver and a sober person, um, I did the responsible thing and drove the van to the hotel and made them all get out and went to bed. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. You're the yeah. team dad that night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I think, but uh i was still there for the party man so it was good we um yeah that trip i i think i got two hours of sleep flew back to uh redmond regional secretary from muzzies picked me up for my parts manager drove me back they already had the legendary muzzy van loaded i threw a few more things in the trailer 
left the shop, stopped by my house. I pre-packed another suitcase, dropped one suitcase off, grabbed the other one, drove the rest the other four and a half hours out to Reedsport. And then we set up booth till like eight o'clock at night. And then uh, I think I hit the sand at like seven the next morning um, for a photo shoot. And then we open, open, start opening at eight, opened at nine. That day I installed probably three systems, maybe four. And then uh, went to dinner with a whole bunch of people. I got back to the, to the uh, room that night and I was just like, oh my God, I'm going to die. And I still had all the books to do from the day. So lovely. Lots of great memories, you know? <laughs> yeah. Not to make this about myself, but really quick, just like you said, uh, we really solidified our friendship at Dunefest. For sure. So I'd gotten there the night before. And so I'm, getting ready to go set up for what we're doing that day. And I had the liberty of being able to run around and do all sorts of different facilitate throughout the day. Well, all of a sudden, my boss at the time starts laughing. I go, what's up? Well, I guess Lauren got the van stuck. Let's go check this out. <laughs> and so that's when I saw the glorious green, white, and purple Muzzy's van. I don't want to say almost to the axle, but it was pretty damn deep buried in that sand. Oh no, it was the axle. It okay, was well, honestly, that's what I remembered, but I didn't want to throw you under the bus to our listeners. Oh, so, no, so. no. I I had already put the call in when I was uh, on my way into town. I was probably 10 minutes out, and I called the guy who does operations out here, Clark. Awesome, dude. I said, hey, I'm fixing to be there about 10 minutes. So I'll, he goes, so you'll be stuck in 12 minutes. I said, yep normal entrance he goes all right i'll start a cat that way that's awesome that's huge <laughs> so yeah i just uh, it's funny because i was talking to one of the guys about that today because somebody rolled out of the sand through the vendor area in their f-350 pulling their trailer and he still had it in four-wheel drive on the pavement and made a hard left and and blew the left front out hell yeah i never aired down man I, just <laughs> I do it's gonna get stuck so i just called ahead <laughs> yeah that's actually even smarter than being ready for the sand is being ready for the uh stuck yeah yeah that van that van was almost as bad as my current dually oh i bet the thing was a steel tank yeah yeah i i am um Unfortunately, one of the tags that I carry at Doomfest is the guy that gets stuck at least once every uh, every year. And um, last year, I didn't, barely. I mean, I got it out. I was able to get it out. This year, when I backed the trailer in, they're nice enough to let me uh, store the trailer over at Main Stage Parking. And when I backed the trailer in, um, I got off their compressed hog fuel and got stuck in like two inches of loose hog fuel and sand in the dually. Let us say, did you it. consider getting it stuck last year just for old time's sake? So you didn't miss one of the years of 14 of getting stuck? Well, you know, it kind of felt good to not get stuck. Honestly, it's a nice badge of honor yeah. to be able to be self sufficient on the sand and be able to move at your own free will. So yeah. I don't blame yeah. you for not wanting to get it stuck. <laughs> It was uh, crazy, but yeah, man. So um, we got here Monday um, and on on the, uh, uh, let me see. Yeah, we got here Monday um, and started helping get Brad's cartoon set up and get the branding up for Kicker and everything. Um, went great. And last year we were trying to do all a lot of that on Tuesday and they were already selling and installing. Wow. Yeah. So those, those poor guys, the installers are tripping over everybody and banners and, you know, so we kind of put this plan together this year to like, let's get all the bones done Monday. Um, which worked out great because they, I think they did, uh, three full systems on Tuesday, which the event opens Wednesday. Yeah. So go figure. So 
event opens Wednesday. You set up. I was, thought you were going to say that you had people even coming by on Monday because they see you setting up and yeah. want some systems. But no, it sounds like that worked out at least. Um, uh, that worked out good. I had a lot of people coming by Monday that were already there or that came in Monday just to say hi. You know, um, I know a couple of people out here. And so it was like, you know, it was, it was really hard to get anything done because everybody kept stopping to say hi. <laughs> I mean, that's going to be anywhere, right? You know, obviously you're a legend there and Reedsport and Coos Bay, but when you're setting up and I'm sure we're going to go through this many times in the show, it's, it's the traveling circus travels together. So when you see each other, it's when you're, everybody's collectively trying to set up, that's when you, can rekindle but also there's work to be done yep absolutely absolutely so yeah it was dude crazy good event um uh, the new the coordinator that took over a few years ago jody morrow dude just loves the sand loves the event i believe they have record attendance this year they have record attendance last year and then beat it this year um yeah just insane bro um it was awesome so incredible even the locals were telling me you know they were going up to the lighthouse to take pictures of all the camping and the sand and the events and which the locals have not always been super receptive here so you know that's huge huge progress and it's it's awesome i love to see it because I, I really love this event. I have a, this is like really used to be my home turf kind of, so to speak. So, you know, it's, it's awesome to see the event grow and flourish and more and more people just the angle, jump on board and go, wow, this is awesome. You know, uh, it's just, yeah, now I, I think that a lot of it had to do with two years ago, we had so many things worldwide taken away so suddenly that I think in the back of your mind, unfortunately, you realize that these things can go away. So yeah. that's why I would personally think from the outside, the last two years have just been so successful. Um, that along with the new management and everything. Yeah, absolutely. People, people want to live. People want to have fun. You know, they want to do what they want to do. And, and it's showing for sure. Um, Man, what a crazy event. I mean, you figure there's like probably close to 30,000 people out in the sand. Um, obviously, you being here, you know, you don't ride during the day. Um, if you're going to ride, you do it at 7 o'clock in the morning when everybody's still in their campers and hungover. Um, but, yeah, dude, it, it's great. And then, of course, the, you know, Kicker has a big part in this uh in this event as a official audio they supply a pa system for the sand drags um and then they're actually present the freestyle show and so we had uh kicker three of the four athletes were were kicker athletes and it's the uh uh you know kicker uh, it's uh Jet City FMX Freestyle presented by Kicker at Doomfest 2022. Um, and that's always such a rush because I get to work with the legend, Tim Shellman, uh, you know, TPQ and his socks and Maria. I love Maria to death. I don't know how she manages him. Oh my God. She keeps him on track and it, well, sort of, but you know, I get to work the stage. It's one of the few times that I get to get behind the mic. Yeah, that's and cool. Yeah, I, I co-announced a freestyle show and uh, I I go in and, you know, one of the things I do is, is get with Clark and we lay out where, because he'll pre-cut the pad and pre-pack a pad for him. Literally, they're jumping uh, True 75 and the stage is 60 feet wide. So the bag is set up at one end of the stage and the takeoff is set up at the other end of the stage. And uh, they're, they're only about 
20 feet off the front of the stage. That's so wild. That's so cool, though. Makes for such good photos and video. Yeah, yeah. I I sent you a couple of Instagram videos. Oh, I was watching. And the pyrotechnics. Yeah, so they did it last night. I didn't go out last night because I had some other commitments. Um, And really, who wants to listen to an announcer over a classic rock cover band, right? I'd rather rather listen to the band than watch, watch freestyle. So at any rate, they, uh, yeah, they, uh, unfortunately, they were supposed to do it Friday and Saturday. Um, Friday, they got blowed out and fogged out at the same time. It was just gnarly. Friday morning, uh, we did a show at 10. Totally awesome. Totally awesome. Great show. Um, for me on a motorcycle, I don't know where your wind limits are, but they were jumping and consistent six with gusts to 10 off their tail um which you know adds a whole new realm to freestyle man i mean these guys robert haslam cody elkins haslam's been a kicker athlete i think four years five years and there's a funny story about haslam i'll tell you in a second elkins has been a freestyle athlete for 20 uh, or a kicker athlete for 20 years and one of the OGs of quad freestyle. Um, and Cody, as a matter of fact, everybody in the world has seen the video of the guy backflipping a motorcycle over top of a biplane flying underneath. And Co- that was Cody in China. Um, yeah. Like, let's jump over a moving airplane. Yeah, let's not worry about lift and densities and all that stuff that changed. Yeah. There's there's so many factors. People look at it and go, oh, wow, that's so cool. Yeah. Imagine just, just the turbulence from the prop, let alone the turbulence from the wingtips and the tail. Like, I, I don't even know how he does it, you know? Yeah, that's, that's for the... I don't want to say the braver, but the bolder than ourselves in that Correct. realm. Correct. And he's 40 years old, man. I'd say that's might even be the most impressive part. Right? Dude's in great shape. I'm jealous. I want to get in his shape. Um, yeah. So, and then we had uh, uh, Cody McDonough, Cody Mack, we call him, Pacific Northwest guy. Um, he's been hitting all the monster jams and whole bunch of stuff um kind of a guy i think haslam kind of brought into the fold a few years ago um and then we had a new kid uh billy wilson billy backside wilson um and so billy robert has been training under his wing for about 18 months and billy had never jumped in the sand cody mc Cody Mack jumped last year. He was green last year. So he knew what to expect this year. He was dialed, right? He did a great job. And Cody Elkins has jumped out here three years. And I think Robert's jumped out here like five years. So uh, those guys are all dialed. And and uh, I'm, I am not going to lie. Uh, uh, Billy Wilson shook me up a little bit in the first practice. Really? Okay. Yeah, just trying to get his range a bit and a little bit of wind and, you know, the turf leading up to the ramp had a little bit of moist coastal moisture in it. And, and uh, I think he didn't think he needed that much pop or that much throttle and bounced it. And, man, he was scratching to get that tire back tire onto the bag. Lovely. And uh, apparently that's where Billy – backside wilson came from is he backsiding everything side of the airbag more than once so i'm like i told him i'm like dude don't ever fucking do that to me again (laughs) he looks scared so you know i'm like okay it worked uh they, they put on a great show and they're so much fun and and they're just good dudes you know it's like 
um, just good, like Robert and Robert and and Cody Elkins are family guys. Um, well, so is Cody Mack now. He just had a baby, so that was really rad. I got in a little ride when I was, uh, I think it was Wednesday. It was either Wednesday or Thursday morning when I had to run some stuff back and forth from the vendor area to the main stage. And I got, I got a little short ride in. There was nobody around, just kind of got out and sanded myself up, you know, a little bit. And, That's and, awesome. Find your, find your Zen and go explore around and, that's yeah. that's a peaceful moment out there in the dunes dude it really helps you center you know especially when you when you've got so much going on you know i've got freestyle i gotta worry about those guys because most of those guys are like family to me you know and and uh i have found taking pictures of them during the show or announcing is way less stressful for me just a distraction i think than actually watching the show yeah you got your mind focused on something else to kind of take you out of it a little bit while still yeah. actively participating in it right like when when you're announcing i'm on stage these guys are jumping literally i have to stand right out at the end of the stage because i'll lose them over the cover on the stage i'll i'll lose them at times doing tricks they were going uh at least 55 high on some of the backflip stuff. They're just huge. Yesterday, they were on fire. Friday, they were like getting their feel. and It was a really good show. But then when they got skunked Friday night, they came out Saturday, you know, both guns blazing. I mean, like uh, Elkins threw a backflip on his second test hit. And I'm yeah, like, so he was feeling comfortable and ready to roll. Yeah, I'm like, Oh, this is a good one. You'll you'll appreciate this. So in the Friday morning show, Elkins is riding another friend of ours bike. Um, because Elkins is based out of Stillwater, Oklahoma, where Kicker is. Um so he's riding a bike that a friend of ours keeps up in the P and dub. And uh KX by right, KX four fifty F or KXF four fifty or you know, whatever, the Cali 450. And he has bolt-on grips. LaRue has bolt-on grips. The right grip wasn't tight. Cody did a kiss of death and monster kiss of death, which was awesome, right? And then he did a couple more tricks. And then he goes to throw another kiss of death. And when he starts to pull the bike back, because um, you use the bars in the grips to rotate the bike back under you if people don't listening don't know what a kiss of death is it's where you go up roughly 55 feet in the air over a 75 foot gap and you basically do a handstand on the handlebars while the bike's facing down and you in essence kiss the front fender you're supposed to like bump your helmet or kiss the front fender of the bike um cody ended up talk about adjustments the grip rotated on him and he actually pulled the bike up shoulder slammed the front fender with his right shoulder to get the bike to rotate back underneath him actually left creases bent the fender so bad it left crease stopped the front tire from rotating it wow was like, okay yeah. that's yeah he made that count okay yeah, and here I am on the stage. I'm like, oh, there's Elkins. Whoa, what am I? A double tap kiss of death. I don't know that I've ever seen that. And he totally on purpose, folks. Yeah, he pulls right up in the stage right in front of me and gets off the bike. And he's like, this grip is loose. I'm like, he goes, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I, he might be done riding somebody else's bike forever, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. What does it take to do an adjustment like that in the air? Um, wow, it, it, it's because you've been riding 30 years, you know, or whatever, 25 years freestyle. 50% uh, skill, 50% survival. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Maybe 1% luck. Yeah. Uh, 
but yeah, dude, it's stellar event. Um, great time. The Brad's guy, the Brad's cartoons guys are just super solid dudes and their installers busted butt all day, every day. Uh, you know, um, and we just, it was a good time, man. Just hanging out with everybody. And, um, it was worth the hassle getting up here, which we said, actually, we should have reminded people right off the get go. We should cut and insert this right in the very get go. Um, before we started that I know you were counting on episode four being the coal mine yards part two, but we're going to do a doom fest recap and thinking episode five will be the coal nine yards part two. We're going to save that. We're going to keep you teasing because I've had several people go, I want to hear the rest of Cole's story. So they're like, I want to get to the important stuff that actually has some substance, but yeah, yeah. in all fairness. And I totally agree. And for those a little behind the scenes, uh, we actually recorded that episode while you were on the road for this trip. So now we're kind of all mixing the order around, but we figured that while it's still so fresh in your mind and while you're still actually involved in it as we speak, that it's to be a great time to actually talk about the event as opposed to uh, wait until you get home. Cause I'm sure there's going to be more stories from the road there, but Dune Fest alone is worth its own episode. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Cause I'd have just bumbled my way through the mess like I was doing. So um, yeah, no, it, I think this was prime time to hit it and man, we had, we had a good time. We had so much fun and, you know, uh, we did promise in E3 that, that we would cover what happened on the trip. Um, so I, I live in Havasu as we all know now, hopefully at least all three of you that listen, um, well, my daughters and my wife. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so I rolled out of Havasu real early, up through Vegas, um, got up north of Vegas, uh, right at the, how do you say, Amargosa? Oh, uh, I actually have no idea. So, probably. It's up Highway 95. It's past the Creech Air Force Base uh, where they do all the drone stuff. It's past um, Mercury, Nevada nuclear test site. And you kind of drop into the Amargosa Valley or Amargosa, I think. Anyway, there's like the Area 51 Alien Center, which actually has the alien cat house attached to it. Yes, folks, that kind of cat house. Um, it's real. Where they find the aliens, but I'm not asking questions. I'm sure you're paying a premium price. Yeah, well, yeah. Think about it. Importing aliens? from space yeah uh hoping they cut a sweet deal with elon maybe, maybe that's what the spacex program yeah. is actually entitled to but yeah well maybe he's a little more forgiving since he just saved like 51 billion yeah he's got a little more to spend in his pocket now the huevos dude's brutal uh anyway he's my hero no not really but he's pretty he's insanely ingenious I feel lucky to be alive while he's alive doing his thing. Put it that way. Yeah, for sure. So anyways, you're in the middle of nowhere, Area 51, Alien Center, truck stop. There's a rest area and there's like a Cowboys Corner truck stop or something. And they're not real truck stops. They're like gas stations with big parking lots and stores. Um, pulled in there. Coming up, and I thought I earlier, like 10 miles earlier, I saw something in my right peripheral in my mirror, and enough to make me move the mirror down and watch the right tires on the trailer. Everything looked fine. Keep them from, I'm rolling the speed limit, which I believe is 77 out there, exactly on cruise. Um, but I had to, you know, I'd have my like six cups of coffee or eight. And I was like, I got to go to the bathroom. They got fuel here. I was going to go another 45 miles. And I'm like, 
you know what, I'm just going to stop now. And it's like, I'm not in a huge rush. I only have to go, uh, whatever it was, 400 miles today or 450 miles today. So, you know, I don't, I don't need to crush it. Right. Um, pull in, start the fuel nozzle, start walking around the truck and trailer to inspect it. And the right rear, uh, wheel on the trailer that one, the, uh, KMC plastic hubcap on the custom KMC wheel is gone. Uh, obviously melted off, judging by the amount of plastic bits that are stuck to the wheel. And all I can see is the freaking spindle nut and what was left of the washer. Everything is like rust colored because it bends up. And I'm like, oh, I have a major problem. I went back there it was so hot you couldn't touch the wheel. You probably smell it before you even had to touch it. No, I smelled the burning flesh when I touched it. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So I finished feeling, did my business, pulled over into where all the truck parking is and jacked it up. And I'm like, ah, I lost a wheel bearing. Well, I, I lost both wheel bearings, actually. Um, so, yeah. So thankfully, through a friend, uh, couple of friends um that are super solid guys uh Kuskas being one of them um and Ryan Few of Octane um are like hey Ryan Lewis get a hold of Ryan Lewis he knows people Ryan Lewis is a uh, uh, manager I think at Fort Worth Parts Vegas well, he referred me to a guy that does mobile trailer repair. So um, we had to have a mobile mechanic come out and cut what was left of the races off the spindle. Um, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Polish the spindle. New bearings, new hub. Um, guy was awesome, though. His name was Aaron. Uh, I think it's called Busted Knuckle Trailer Repair or Mobile Trailer or something uh in las vegas if you break if you break down and you're in a world of shit uh they can help you i will tell you you'll pay for it um but that being said thank god they were available um so i drove basically four hours spent seven hours on the side of the road and then drove the other four hours got into hawthorne after dark i got in at uh like eight fifty eight. And the local pizza place that I absolutely love, they have these awesome, awesome pizza bread sandwiches. It's like half a loaf of Italian bread made up like a pizza and then crushed into a sandwich and baked. Oh, that's badass. Dude, so good. Um, they close at nine. And I'm not the guy to show up at 8.59 and ask them, you know. No, know even 8.30, you would have probably been... Yeah. Eight thirty, I probably would have done it. But um anyway, so um I think I ate a turkey and Swiss pita from the gas station. Um and yeah, anyway, and then I rolled up, rolled on in to band the next day up through Reno and all that, uh into band and then we recorded in band. I spent a couple of days there with uh uh, with my parents, you know, glad to say my mom's doing good. Hallelujah. Fantastic. Uh, you know, everything could always be better, but, but, uh, she's doing really, really good. So I'm really thank, thank God for that. Um, got to see my grandkids and whatnot, trying to maximize the road trip, you know, so I'm had coffee with them three mornings in a row. And then it was like, okay, well, time for Papa Wheelie to go to work. So, got out here and uh yeah just just a super rad week i mean you can probably hear how jacked up i am you know i had to see my buddy thomas jackson um so he's a listener shout out thomas jackson yeah yeah uh, uh voltric i think that's the name of his company now voltric um yeah so many people uh just, I mean, I can't even begin to name them all or who they're with, you know, it's, it's just crazy. And, and, uh, you know, it's kind of like, as you know, you get up there, it's kind of like being a, 
<laughs> oh, did you see that? I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to get the YouTube channel going. Yeah. I was, I was trying to hide a yawn out. so hard. Just yawn, bro. I, if I'm boring you, just give me the like. No, you're not boring me. It's just been a long day. Not as long as your day. Oh, no, I'm not I'm as tough as you. Today hasn't been that bad, really. It's been, this probably, out of all the days at Doomfest, this is probably one of the easier ones. I mean, I was wrapped by like two o'clock today. So, you know. Yeah, so that's seven, a quarter day for you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. About that. 7 a.m. out and, uh, you know, wrap it up. Um, so, yeah, man, just what a, what a great event. And they had, really they had so much going on they had a pit bike track they had a huck fest i saw that that was that was cool i saw that they were blading for a pit bike track yeah, um, yeah i didn't get to see the finished product but i'm like dang dude if you go out there with 10 12 inch wheels and 65 cc a fury or a 110 four stroke i mean you're in for a good time oh yeah i guess it was really well received and apparently last night they set up in the uh, area of the pit bike track uh pit bike huck fest that's terrifying yeah and they ran it after the concert um which you know had to be uh midnight roughly so um i'm sure everybody was sober <laughs> uh yeah um so i haven't heard the results of any of that um but you know, it so many cool things. They had, and they end up having a quad run a uh, uh, three hundred three one. Shoot, I can't remember. Well, uh, three hundred three, well over a hundred mile an hour pass down the drags. Uh, high, I think it was a high boost turbo high boost powered quad. That's exciting. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah like one hundred twenty miles an hour or something in three hundred feet on sand so um yeah it was just dude so much fun being out here you know yeah no i haven't probably been since 2015 or 16 around that area so seeing all the social media stuff i was pretty blown away because i've even told my writing friends that i want to take them up there some year just because it sounds so cliche but you don't understand it until you see it you know and Growing up in Southern California, the fact that you can ride on a beach is just an event in itself besides Pismo, right? But just the yeah. fact that you can go out there and do this and there's pine trees. I mean, for us, we're like, what the hell is a pine tree, you know? Right, right. But yeah, um, but yeah just seeing that they had the mini bike course, the how well you guys had that stage built for the freestyle, that was totally different than what I had seen previously. I don't know if they still do the Grand Prix. I remember being very intrigued by that wanting to participate in that but um something new that i saw and it might not even be the first year they've done it is that they actually did a huck fest yes. this year yeah no they did it last year also okay but that's new that's some of the new exciting stuff that jody's bringing in and uh yeah man they were they did a bike uh bike and atv one day and then did um uh, UTV the next day so side by side the next day um, and actually one of the installers uh, from Brad's was going to do the bike long jump he was signed up to do it and he went out and test hit it the day before and he's like it's the landing's too flat yeah he was like I can't do it so and he's been riding in the sand since he was like five years old so yeah, so he lived to fight another day and he knew yeah, he knew when to call it. And it's to be honest, to build a jump correctly would be different for a motocross bike, which would be different from a quad, which is UTV. And I'm not the promoter. I'm not I I want no part of that. And you're dealing with what you got, but yeah, to want to do a long jump on a bike that, on a flat landing like that is yeah, you know, it's uh it's an option. Yeah. Yeah, it's an option I wouldn't take. Um, you know, the other really rad thing we had the in the side by side industry, we had the unicorn. Um, guess what? It does exist. 
So, uh, yeah, Speed UTV um, had one of their pre-production cars out there. And I can tell you, I actually saw it drive. I saw it drive in the sand. Wow. I heard it. I sat in it. Um, really super blessed, you know. Um, I don't really know uh, Robbie that well, but I've known Todd Romano for years and years and years. I, I, uh, I worked with Todd Romano when and starting when I was with Muzzies, I think I started working with Todd in like 2012 um, when he was getting ready to do the Arctic Cat score side-by-side -side team with the Wildcats. Yeah, that makes sense. I was going to ask what the correlation was between the two companies. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, so um, we did all their engines and, and uh, performance testing and stuff like that for their score of 250, 500, 1000 race cars. Um, so, and you know, they, they almost, almost within 18 miles of winning the 500 first try with that car. Um, and uh, nothing to do with the motor. They broke a connection at the fuel rail and the car caught on fire yeah lovely uh not at the fuel fuel line sorry my fuel line um and uh yeah and they had like easily i think they had a through three hour and 37 minute lead or something like that at the time i mean just had to cruise it they could have taken extra pits if they wanted to they could have the yeah. driver swap for fun what i mean all the time yeah. in the world so yeah so so close but you know that's uh that's racing that's desert racing as you well know you know you cover so much desert racing stuff especially now by the way desert racers uh check and find out go to instagram and look up at the premix podcast um and check Mr. Farrell's uh, endeavors in photography. And really, I, he's good at a lot of different classes, but I feel like I see about three to one class 11 pictures. Well, so to be fair, and I, I, well, first of all, thank you for the very nice shout out. It's, uh, it's incredible. And I don't want to, over hype him, but I would think that Blake Wilkie, most of you people know him as Shreddy. Uh, Blake Wilkie has really brought that class back to life. Yep. He's done step by step videos of how he built his car that they call the Slug Shark. And the fact that he's like, look, I know that I know what I'm doing, but I'll talk to you on the phone. I'll walk you through the process. Um, long story short, he he's got that class revitalized. And so the point of that story is that there are so many cars to choose from when I'm out there filming, even at the Glen Helen race a couple weeks ago, uh, they probably had probably the second biggest class after 1600 buggies. Wow. Which yeah, 10 pretty... years ago, there might've been one or two. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. And you're absolutely correct. And props to him for doing that you know every time i see wilkie he's like when are we going to build you a class 11 when are you going to get in a class 11 i'm like dude have you seen me i'm i'm not sure that i could make you know 250 miles in a class 10 let alone a class 11 man I couldn't i'm in it. the same boat i'm not willing to ruin somebody else's race because my body falls apart in the right, right seat yep. You know what? Maybe we should team up in a class 11. Yeah, we'll take smoke breaks. We'll hang out. I'll take photos yeah. of plants. We're like, oh, we're sore. You know, what What time's the checkpoint close? All right, let's get going. We got it. We got it. Let's have a white monster. Oh. We'll get back out there. I know you and you know me. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, like uh, you know, hydration pack, like hydration pack full of coffee, hydration pack full of uh, sugar-free Red Bull or Monster Ultra or you know, whatever company wants a part of it, um, maybe some water, maybe cars, you know, and, we could make uh, it. 
and we'll do it. When we do a driver swap, we'll just change seats. Yeah. We'll I might need a, a booster seat, but we'll do an insert like they do in Indy cars for that little tiny guy, the little tiny American guy. Yeah. Uh, Will something. Is he American? Will power? No, he's um uh New Zealander, I think. He was testing cars with someone and they built him this little booster seat uh insert that went in the seat. I was like, that's a good idea, actually. Yeah. I think hey. Testing uh uh I picked up GT cars, so gotcha. Okay. So uh, we'll think of it after we stop recording. That's how it works. Yeah, yeah. I can't I can't remember who it was now, but I thought it was funny because his co-driver it's like it wasn't it wasn't like he had michael waltrip as his co-driver or something but there was like you know six inches of height difference and the body was four inches wider and you know yeah funny stuff so wow that was that was quite the sidetrack um but yeah anyways cole is uh is really been nailing it on the on the photography dude i i, I really love to see the stuff you're doing so yeah hopefully. thanks i i definitely have a lot to learn but i mean i took uh, a lot of photo classes in high school and even my wife took photo in high school and college and there's a lot of stuff that she can show me on the camera so it's just been I, i'll take yeah. a picture of something and she can grab it out of my hands and go well this is actually how you do it and she'll hit the iso ten thousand times and do all this funky stuff and she gets a cooler shot than anything I can ever take. So it's very nice to have that support system in my own house. Yeah. Yeah. The, it it kind of, you know, it's tough though. Cause that means you got to listen to your wife once in a while. It's called, so well, yeah. You, but if you're interested in the topic, you know to turn that switch on and off. It's, it's, it, it's all based on if you're interested or not, or if you've heard it before. Oh yeah. Hmm. There's only one, there's only one word that the Viking says that turns my switch on. So anyway, let's get back to Doomfest. So Is now, that- um, yeah. sorry to cut you off there, but it's uh, obviously you've seen growth over the last two years. I mean, is the excitement up for next year? Is did anybody feel left out that they couldn't be a vendor? I mean, um, I get, you know, I, I get calls because I know a lot of people in the industry. I get calls um, from people saying, hey, do you think, you know my product, do you think this event is worth doing? And I'm like, absolutely. I think it's, you know, it's one of the only true, I think it's actually the only true West Coast family orientated events and that's huge because more and more people are having kids or their kids are big enough now they've got a four seat or they're still riding all quads together or whatever but you, you see family after family after family out there which is great because that only promotes the industry right it only helps the industry grow but the other side of it is um, if you don't have events targeted toward, towards families, it's not like, where are they going to go? You know, if you like, literally they had every day they did, I think two the forest service put on, um, two of the child safety rider courses. That's cool. Where they actually trained kids how to ride, how to be safe, and and they get their little ATV card or motorcycle card, you know? Uh, oh, that'd even be cool to take back to school. That starts apparently in two weeks again, and hey, check out my license I got this summer. Absolutely, yeah, and it's free, right? It's even the coolest part. And they do, like, uh, they have drags for, like, 50, 50 cc quads and motorcycles up in the sand drags, you know, they have the, uh, what's called last main stand. Nah, it's not called that anymore. Some race, uh, every man challenge and they have it for kids now, you know? So what's there, that race? What's, uh, where's that at? What's that about? Head to head. So they go a loop on each side of the race course 
um, and the guy that hits the finish first wins. Oh, so it's like so it's like an elimination bracket kind of yep. thing. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yep. I so thought you were I, gonna I, say who who doesn't break the car over doing. A, no, got it. It's not a coup de no. gras. Okay. So it's like a head to head two cars, um, but they run them on separate tracks to um, keep the people who actually think they are Mario Andretti from running into the people who are Mario Andretti. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, and I guess really exciting. I've never got to watch one. Well, I haven't watched one in years because um, I'm always working. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess they're really exciting. They even did it for little kids. I mean, I saw several several especially of the vendors bring their kids race 170s in for this race that's so cool and i don't not yeah. to get on a tangent here but in today's sue happy society it's it's so easy as a promoter to try to avoid racing as a whole and now that you have different types of racing plus a huck fest and now you're getting kids involved in the racing whether it be drag racing everything it's i mean I give all the applause in the world for that because if you're a kid and you can actively participate in something, especially along with your dad or with your family, yep, that's hands down memories for a lifetime, no doubt. Sure, sure. Yeah, you got these kids, you got, geez, dude, probably 200 or 300 people standing around watching them run this course. You know, how rad is that? You got at the drags, you got an announcer up there calling their name. Yeah. Oh, you know? and they're calling their name just as much as they're calling like, you know, uh, uh, Biffle wasn't here this year, but you know, the big G, G Armstrong. You That's know? what I was going to say. You beat me to it. G laid down some heaters this year, I guess, you know? So, I mean, uh, the more, the more that happens, the more our chosen industry or the industry that chose us is maybe more likely um grows and has a much brighter future you know it's like doing the arena cross stuff man when i do the arena cross stuff you see 50 kids signed up for the for the four to six 50 cc class 50 and you're going to take a gate of like 18 double stack them and run a gate of 18 um you know i've seen as many like in the what is it? Seven to seven to ten or seven to nine? Um, it's usually a seven to nine, yeah. Yeah, seven to nine fifty class. I've seen as many as like eighty five riders. That's so cool. That that and makes me happy. Purpose. Yeah, it's crazy. But you know, we're literally by encouraging that and helping that and assisting that and doing whatever we can to help them continue. We're growing our future in the industry also, you know? I mean, I'm I'm not that old. I, I kind of old, but I'm not that old. I want to be able to do this 20 years from now. Absolutely. You know? And growing a generation, continuing to grow generation after generation um, that wants to ride or wants to go duning or whatever, just in, in, ensures that it's going to continue, right? I should get off my pulpit. You can tell me anytime, dude, chill out. I feel wound up. No, this is, we're passionate about the topic. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm also starting to get a little bit of FOMO from not being there. <laughs> Next year. You know what? Next year, um, just come as my producer and assistant. Yeah, and I'll go walk around. I'll just bring the microphone. I'll yeah, shove it in people's yeah. faces, whatever. I, I, I sucked. I know you told me to get some voice recording interviews, and you I didn't. Were get, working. I didn't get one at all. My real job got in the way, you know. And it's like, um, but I've I've got some guys who had said, "Oh man, that'd be rad." Yeah, I'd love to be on it, and uh, so we will have some of those guys. Um, coming up uh the going back to that speed car dude i i'm not jumping on the bandwagon 
but I think it's going to be a pretty good car. And I got to tell you, it's pretty comfortable to sit in. Okay. So, you know, we'll see. Um, supposedly, they're going to start delivering uh, pre-orders uh, super, super Show. See, um, I'm right in the middle, and I'm, I'm just like you. I'm not going to overhype it, and I'm certainly not going to trash talk somebody in the industry. It's just so funny because we've seen this car around since 2019, I want to say. I saw it at the Sand Sport Super Show, the first real-life models and stuff. And so I would hope for all the people who have deposits and the people who are excited and the people that want to ride this desert season that it does show up. Um, but as I get older, I also get a little bit more realistic. And it's like, okay, we'll see it, see it when we see it. Yeah, I I have a feeling that they, that that it we will see it. Um, you know, uh, I think it's going to be good. I might even look at one a couple of years down the road. Yeah, that, that that's more than any testimony I've heard so far. It's from uh, anybody I know, dude. Even like crazy stuff. I mean, obviously, I have one in the booth. The whole you know uh thursday friday saturday had a lot of time to look at it one the audio the kicker performance audio that's the oem audio package in that car i i had competitor brand reps coming up to me going that is by far the best sounding oem utv audio i have ever heard that's so cool and I'm like, well, we did it right, you know, um, meaning kicker did it right. Right. But, but yeah, no, they did a good job. Um, and I, you know, I really, I'm like you, I really do hope, I hope that, that, you know, the face gets slapped with the gloves, so to speak. I want to see, I want to see him duel it out. I want to see him duke it out. You know, um, I want to see the big car go against the big car. And uh, I think it's going to be pretty exciting. Um, and hopefully it happens. See, so, I'm not on the inside. We'll call it the inside of the industry anymore, which is cool because it leaves a lot of wonderment on my end. Right. So we just had this, the Pro R come out, right? Correct. And so if they can be the next like car out in the market, I think it could be so extremely successful because obviously can-am and honda and everybody and yamaha especially they're not sitting on their hands right but i haven't heard any whispers of anything so if they can come to the market before the next whatever comes out i think it's going to be very special the 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 next whenever is coming it's Let's inevitable yeah okay yeah. Next whatever is coming um yeah so anyways but you know you learn a lot at doomfest um so yeah it's uh dude what a great event so much fun and um you know i'm pretty much wrapped up i'm gonna take two, a couple days and uh my my oldest daughter and uh my little hyperactive uh papa wheelie's cookie cutter granddaughter are coming down for a couple of days. We're gonna screw off a little bit, do a little fun time. That's awesome. And then, yeah, and then I'm on on uh, on the road north to Castle Rock, Washington, for the great revival of the uh, Castle Rock American Flat Track TT, which I'm super excited for, and I I really like. So far, all the riders I've met, I really like, but it's a TT. So like the number 95, I'm going to be like, dude, you got this, you know? Um, it's I like so you. funny you say that right before He's we started dude. recording. I was just watching Peoria. Oh, yeah. TT How was with, uh, I mean, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it already, but my number 95. Yep. Out at home. I yep, was yep. yelling at the TV and my wife didn't understand why. But I've, I've seen a bunch of the... Uh, you know, I've seen a bunch of the video stuff from it. I have the app, 
but it turns out you have to have data to watch that stuff live stream. Um, and of course this week, uh, where were we yesterday? Where were they yesterday? Uh, I could look at my calendar. It doesn't really matter. Um, I couldn't get it yesterday. That's the one thing about Winchester Bay. Um, you can send a text. You may be able to get a phone call and make a phone call. Um, and that's about it. You can't send a text with pictures. You can send a text with emojis, um, but not with pictures. So like every night, as you know, you've been through this, right? You come out. You clear the bay and your phone goes berserk for like eight minutes. Yeah, it starts freezing up. Yeah. It's like yeah. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, email after email. I had like 14 emails and four miles. Well, you're also trying to usually go to dinner or something too at that point. And then you sure. have this moral dilemma of do I answer all these texts and emails and my family's missing me or I'm probably going to dinner with a customer or friend. So what takes priority? But yeah, that's part of the Winchester Bay experience. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. If you haven't been up here, I, I highly recommend you get up here and check it out. And we definitely got to get this the sand snake up here um, next year somehow. Um, yeah, I suppose we're probably hitting time. I You've got to get a timer to keep me real, Dean, bro. I know, you know, but I was just having so much fun talking about Dean Fest, and now my wheels are turning about going myself, so. Yeah, you know, that's that's what happens. I mean, uh, we're like, oh, yeah, we can do this in 35 minutes, and then we get going, and I'm like, dude, how did that go? It's like the coal mine yards part one. How did that go an hour? Yeah, that was that got out of my hands pretty fast. It felt like 25 minutes. Yep. I was, I, I, all things being fair, good, and equal, I learned a lot about you that I didn't know, a lot of background. Um, and dude, I was in thrall. I'm just like totally, you probably saw it. I was engaged. I'm like, oh, I should ask a question about that. And I'm writing stuff on my notepad, you know, but I'm like, wow, uh, that's rad, you know? Um, yeah, I just thought it was great. I've got some really good positive feedback about that episode. So um, a lot of my friends say they they like our banter. So, yeah. Well, know. this is just us recording a phone call. You know what I mean? Like, it's <laughs> just, but yeah. the only difference is now we record it and put it online. So it's yeah. natural for yeah. us. But yeah, that's good. I'm not afraid to say anything at any given time. Um, I do like there's a couple, obviously a couple things that I got to check up on and make sure I behave a little bit. Um, but yeah, man. Oh yeah. So going back to the freestyle guys real quick before we wrap. Cody Elkins, longtime kicker athlete, sends me a message. He's like, hey, um, I'm coming in Wednesday night. Can you pick me up at the Eugene Airport? And I'm like, well, I guess so. What time? Uh, 11.43. I'm like, you're kidding me. Dude, you are killing me. So literally, <clears throat> did I already go through this part? No. Uh -uh. Oh, so literally, yeah, I worked all day, right? Uh, Wednesdays, full day, opening day. Um, the boys at Brad's probably did at least four installs. I mean, it was a humping day, you know, and I was working with some media and stuff, trying to get stuff lined out for the freestyle show and all that. Get done. Um, Wednesday. Is that Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday. Uh, had uh, dinner with, actually with, uh, uh, anyway, had dinner uh, with a couple of people and uh uh sat around jumped in the truck at, at basically 10 p.m drove an hour and a half uh half a half an hour up the coast and half and almost basically an hour inland pitch black dude they don't have street lights out here i don't know if oregon didn't pay the power bill or what but these roads are skinny you know, you know like pch um you know, it's the 101, 
right? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Which way did you go if you went jammed back to the highway and then up? Because the forest route is actually faster. And that's the way that I've done, where you go yeah. up the coast and then in, and it's yep. like Mulholland Drive for an hour and a half. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not near as much fun in a two-wheel drive dually at night when you don't see great um, and you have no trailer on the back. Uh, but I got them picked up, got back, I laid down, and I'm like, okay, you know what? And uh, I'm like, okay, well, got him situated for the night, finally washed up and stuff. When my head hit the pillow, I looked over at the clock. It said 2.37 a.m. Oh, no. I'm like, well, I'm going to sleep till 6. Then I'm going to hit snooze five minutes at a time till 6.30. And then I got to get up and get to work and start getting ready for the day. You know, I got another big day. So, of course, that night was the night my body decided, you don't really need sleep. So I woke up once to use the facilities, uh, went back to sleep. And when I woke up for good for the day, I woke up, I was laying there. I'm like, not going back to sleep. Looked over, 547. So that's an evil time warp. Right. And then it was Thursday and Thursday they do the sponsor appreciation dinner. They like, you know, it starts at seven and goes till I left at nine thirty or so, you know, because it was getting it was at a really cool place that but it was outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it was cold. My my legs, I was wearing shorts and two coats. Um I brought coats this year though at least. So but I was starting to get cold. I'm like, I gotta go. Uh plus I was, you know two and a half hours sleep. I'm not good at math, whatever that is, 237 to 547. It's, it's definitely a number, so. Yeah, and it's a small number. Um, but yeah, anyways, that was awesome, though. I was really, you know, he was very gracious uh, for the fact that, that I picked him up, and I'm like, wouldn't have it any other way, man, you know? Factory support factory rider right there every time you hit the ramp did you say you're welcome you're welcome yeah 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 for sure so anyways what a, we're we're way out on time aren't yep we? so let's thank our uh thank our partners here special thank you kicker performance audio um man i got my got my cord of kush doing work here um uh, cole's wearing the buds i believe uh and man, the products they have, check them out, kicker.com. Get the premium audio uh, from just an amazing bunch of people. Quality of the product is, is unmatchable. Um, durability, whatever you need. Off-road, on-road, car, pickup. Uh, you just want to add a subwoofer or, or you want to put a... $50,000 system in your car. Um, they got you covered for sure. And they're great people on top of it, you know. Really grateful to have them supporting us. Thank you, Jeremy. Appreciate you. Um, having them supporting us and, and, uh, and you know, supporting me in my day job. So, um, and of course, Bomber Floating Eyewear. Tommy the Bomber, man. He's, he's uh, the Levi's of sunglasses. Everybody should own at least five pairs. Um, I know I do. Uh, man, durable. Get them in the safety lens. I actually, the pair I wore out here all week, uh, I'm still wearing that that limited edition series. Oh, yeah, we're, we're never mind. I was showing, I was showing Cole, so you guys know. Um I was showing him because we're on video and maybe someday you'll see it on YouTube, but I'm actually relatively stupid because this is a podcast, not a vlog or video cast. So um, nonetheless, uh, Bomber Floating and I were great supporters of us. Great guys. Thank you, Tommy. 
And uh, of course, as always, the unbelievably talented Cold Trickle Dickle Farrell, my producer and co-host, the man. Um, dude, I'm I'm so thankful for you. I really did miss you. I wish you'd have been here this week. We'd have we'd have tore it up. We would have had fun because you would have been working 12 hours, 14 hours a day or whatever. I would have found ruckus in the meantime. And then afterwards, we would have had our own rumpus time. So yeah. 2023, yeah, it's coming true. in hot. We're coming in with fury. But yeah, I yeah. missed you too, man. And especially even hearing all these stories. I'm like, I guess that's the point of this podcast, right? Is to tell the stories. But I'm like, yeah. dang, I wish sure. I was there. And I even see this Motel 6 that I've stayed at here. Or the Best Western, I should say, right here. I'm like... You know, I, I miss these walls. <laughs> you stayed here, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the first place yeah. I ever stayed. Yeah, and then didn't you stay at uh, like the Winchester Bay Inn? Uh, one year, and then one year we stayed in a haunted house. So we kind of been all over the, all oh, over yeah. the map. Okay. So I, I, Robbie owns the Winchester Bay Inn, and he's got a really cool little place right in the top second floor, top front corner that faces the bay. It's got big windows on both sides. Um, and it's a little two bedroom, micro kitchen, dining room. Uh, and he he takes good care of me. So shout out to Robbie at Winchester Bay and hooking me up there um, when I stay with the kids. That's cool. Because I, I, I don't want a hyperactive two and a half year old jumping on my head at five thirty in the morning. So now nah, it's possible that could happen anyway. She can open doors now. So if she yeah. can she can move something in front of it and open it. So anyway, we need to wrap. Um I've gone way long again. I get carried away. I'm sorry, Cole. No, I don't apologize to me. I'm having fun. We have we have there's so many people I talk to um at Doomfest about what we're doing and i'm like man i sure like to have you on there and so far nobody has said you're out of your fucking mind so um you know not yet it's gonna happen but not yet so that's great yeah yeah so we gotta we gotta get through uh the coal nine yards part two before we have guests um so but all that being said folks thank you please Subscribe, download, give us a like. What else they got to do? Uh, that's it. Follow you on Instagram, Mad Dog Media. Oh, Mad Dog underscore media, correct. Uh, Premix podcast, at Premix podcast. Um, yeah, for sure. And at some point, we're going to get the feed uh, also over um, onto YouTube. Uh, and then also on to maddogsgarage.com all one word m-a-d-d-o-g-s garage.com uh our website so yeah dude well we're, we're gonna be like already we're worldwide you know so yeah i mean rather i mean, any, that was pretty expected but yeah yeah rather anybody's listening worldwide we are broadcast worldwide and I think that's a great place to end this episode. Amen. Hey, thank everybody for coming along. Cole, have a great night. Thank you for your time. I appreciate and love you, brother. Um, talk in 30 seconds. Love you, bro. Talk to you later. See ya. Mad dog out. <laughs>